Today, we're gonna take a look at graves. A very cool Minecraft plugin that lets players drop a grave as soon as they die inside of your Minecraft server. Now, the grave will actually hold on to all the items you had when you died. So you can customize how long the grave will actually remain, if anyone on the server or only the player who died can open it, if XP will be saved as well, and a lot more. So before we start, of course, do make sure to leave a like. Also, press that subscribe button and click on the notification bell. You would really help me out by doing that. You actually would. We're trying to hit the 30k subscribers now, which will be the next big milestone here on the channel. And then without any further ado, let's dive right into this. So the first step will be clicking on the link in the description that will take you to the Graves Spig and MC page. Over here you will find a ton of information about everything the plugin can do, but what we want to look for is simply the download button. So locate download now and just a single click should do the trick. After that simply locate your Minecraft server folder, then look for the plugins folder and you simply want to drag the file we just downloaded inside. Just like that. Now, if you're hosting your Minecraft server at the channel partner Alienhost, this process will be even more easy. What you can do is simply click on the plugin tab on the left of your screen and then search for the plugin you want. In our case, it will be a Graves. And there it is, the Graves plugin. Simply click on install, wait for a little bit, and there you go. Graves is successfully installed on our Minecraft server. By the way, if you want to check out Alienhost, there will be a link down below. And do make sure to use code I love Kasai for a 20% off your order. Then, upon restarting your Minecraft server, you will be ready to go. Well, let's say something horrible would happen. I just went around the world gathering the most valuable materials in Minecraft. But then, it happened. <laughs> I died and lost all of my stuff. Or did I? Maybe I didn't. So upon dying, we got ourselves a compass. An enchanted compass to be more precise. And this compass will lead us to our grave, aka the point where we died. And this is what one of those graves looks like. So you actually see a hologram above your grave displaying some information. So it says a Casazora's grave, which is of course me. And here it will also tell you the amount of XP it has Stored. Very cool. Over here you will see the time remaining. So this grave will be laying here for an additional three hours. After those three hours are over, the grave will despawn and my items will be gone forever. And then at the bottom you can see the death reason. In this case, I fell to my death. One of the most embarrassing deaths I think you can have in Minecraft. But it happened, so everyone can see that now. That's great. Anyway, the compass will lead you to the grave. This is what a grave looks like. Now, you can actually edit in the config what a grave should look like. So, this is the default grave. Though, if you want a grave to look like, for example, the head of the player that died, then that is something you can do. But more on the config later. So, this is the grave. When we now right mouse click on the grave, it will open the chest with all your stuff inside. So here we got all my netherite gear, all my netherite armor, and we also got a book. Now when you take all the stuff out of the grave and you exit out, the grave will actually disappear, which is beautiful. By the way, it will also give you a lot of information in chat. So here it actually says you were killed in the overworld by fell. In other words, I died by falling. I know game. I know. It's been enough. I'm aware. Then it will say exactly where you died. So the exact coordinates. So you can actually go back there. It will also say the world where you died in. And then it will also say how many blocks you are away. Well, in my case, it were only three blocks. So... I was very lucky. No, this could actually be really handy. Now, the book we got from that will just display some information. So here it will actually say the name of the player who died, the cause of death, the dates, the items, and XP, as well as the exact coordinates where we died and the grave appeared. Now, good to know is that this plugin will always look for a place to spawn the grave. So even if you die inside the end by falling into the void, for example, then the plugin will actually try to look for the last place that player was standing and then spawn the grave there. Same thing goes for when you fall in lava. The grave will always try to spawn at a safe location. Now, that is pretty much everything the plugin is about. Though there is a lot to customize in the config, so let's hop in there. You want to go back to your Minecraft server folder, then look for 
for plugins. After that, you will now see a folder called Graves. Click on there. And in here, we simply want to go to the config folder. And after that, open config.yml for some general settings. So over here, you will be able to change the storage method, if that is something you're into. Down at the bottom, you will be able to enable or disable integration with certain plugins. So you can see here in this list, we got World Guard, we got Tawny, Grief Defender, Script as well, Placeholder API, Rakeson, all very cool and popular plugins. Now I would highly suggest just keeping these all on true, even if you're not using them. Because if you don't have the plugin installed, so in my case, I don't have Tawny installed, then there's no harm in keeping this to true. Though as soon as you install Tawny, it will automatically enable the integration. Now what can integration do for you? Well, for example, in World Guard's case, you can make it so that graves can't be spawned inside of a World Guard region. So you can make specific regions where if players die in there, they won't actually get a grave. But that's just an example. There are a lot of things you can do with this. Now, after checking the config.yml, let's go into the graves.yml. So over here, you will be able to customize your grave. So all the way at the top, we have the default grave. So the default grave, these are the options for graves. They're not overridden by entities or permission configs. So a default grave, that is the one we just saw in game. A grave that will last this amount of time, this is the amount of time in seconds, but this translates to three hours. So that's precisely what we just saw in game. Then here you got the maximum amount of graves an entity can have. It is on 18, meaning that you could die 18 times and have 18 graves spread across the world and you could just gather them all. And only when you die in 19th time, it will become a problem. Now, if you got a lot of players on your Minecraft server, I would actually highly recommend putting the max a bit lower, maybe to something like three, for example. That way, one person can only have three graves. If you have 50 people online, there will still be 150 graves if everyone has three graves out. So uh, you would probably want to put it a little bit lower than 18. Then break, can graves be broken? broken yes or no and explode can graves be blown up in this case it is false so if i place a tnt next to it the grave will survive though i will be able to break it with a pickaxe now if you break it with a pickaxe then it might drop the loot you can also set it so that it doesn't drop the loot but that is something we can customize further down so let's keep going so here we got the placement options and the first one is can build only create graves where the entity can build so this goes back to the world guard example i gave earlier when we put this to true a grave will actually not spawn inside of a world guard region though when we leave it on false a grave will still spawn and the second one is can build protocol lib <laughs> only create graves where the entity can build according to protocol lib if you got that plugin installed you know who you are you might want to enable that yes or no then we got ground settings and void settings so if the entity dies in the void should it place a grave in the air if it can't find anywhere else it is actually untrue by default that will be hard though good luck getting back your loot in the end that will be a struggle now you also got the void smart option so if the entity dies in the void, try place your grave on the last solid block they stood on. The same thing goes for lava. So indeed, the plugin will try to track what the last solid block is the player stood on and generate the grave there. If it can find it, then it will still generate it in the void or on top of the lava. So somewhere you can be happy because your stuff isn't gone. On the other hand, you will have a really hard time retrieving your stuff, which could also be a fun adventure. Then a little further down, we got worlds so in what worlds should it be enabled it is currently set to all worlds if you want it disabled in the end for example we could put a hashtag in front of this line and then remove a hashtag from worlds and from worlds nether so now it will be enabled in these two it will still be disabled in the end of course if you got custom worlds with for example multiverse you can add your own world to this list then we got drops should the grave actually drop the stuff when you break it you can set that to false in that case, when players break the grave, they will lose their stuff. It is true by default, though. And here, when a grave times out, drop everything in it. If false, it gets destroyed. So the three hours we saw in-game, if those three
three hours are over, should the stuff just be dropped on the ground and lay there until it gets despawned? Or should the grave just disappear with all of its content? That's up to you. Same thing goes for explosions. Same thing goes for breaking. All fully customizable here. Then we got the block. So what the actual grave looks like. Should the grave block be enabled? Of course. What should the material be? In this case, it is a player hat. But you can also put it to a chest or a beacon. A beacon could actually be pretty handy. That will make it easier to find. Then walked over. Should the grave be looted if the block is walked over? And then you got the head type. This is important. So currently the head type is 1. And what is 1? What does 1 mean? Well, one means a custom texture. And what is the custom texture? Well, the custom texture is this. Now, how do you even get a custom texture? Well, that's really easy. There's this website called Minecraft Hats. I will leave a link to it down below. Under the subscribe button. Make sure to press it. Now, when you click on custom hats here, you will be able to find a custom hat of your own. So when we click on the clock, for example, and we scroll down to the bottom, under the tab other, you will see value. Now, this value is what you would want to copy. So when we copy this value, go back to our config and replace the current value with the one we just copied. Now, every single grave will look like that clock. So that's a custom texture. Now, type 0 is actually a player slash entity hat. So when we change this to 0, it will now have the hat of the player that died. Which, in my opinion, might be even cooler. But once again, it is fully up to you. And for the rest over here, you will be able to change the hologram. So if you want to display different information this is where you can change that and then the protection options this is actually also pretty important so should the grave be protected now what does protected mean it means protected from other players so when it's not protected anyone can open the grave when it is protected nobody can open the grave until the time is over currently the time is 300 seconds aka five minutes then here we gotta open can the owner open the grave true or false can the killer open the grave? True or false? And can other entities open the owner's grave? True or false? Now you can actually turn this into a very fun game mode. So when you, for example, set owner to false, that would mean that only the killer can open the grave from someone they killed. That would become quite interesting. I'm wondering how a server like that would turn out. Now next we have the graveyard feature. So the graveyard feature is actually pretty cool. You can mark a specific place on your Minecraft server called a graveyard. And when players die, their grave will be put on that graveyard. Now, those are the most important options. There is a lot more though. So here we got teleport options, storage options, particle options. Here we got stuff for the compass. So if you want to change that, if you want to change the name of the compass or how it works, that is all doable here. Then over here, you will be able to change the information of that book we saw in game. Then you get the hat, zombie, token and even beneath that there are so many more options this config is actually huge i would highly suggest going over all of it before introducing the feature on your own minecraft server but all the stuff i just showed you those are by far the most important options and those are the basics of graves now this plugin does have a lot more features so i would highly suggest checking them out for your own a link to the plugin will be down below and then i really really hope you enjoyed watching this video if you did make sure to leave a like and also press that subscribe button and click on the notification you would really help me out by doing that you actually would we're trying to hit the 30k subscribers now which will be the next big milestone here on the channel so do make sure to hit subscribe it would help out a lot and then i wish you an amazing day and i will see you in the next one bye bye <laughs>